you're a home buyer, somebody or a young person looking to buy a home, you need a bit of a reset. There, there is a possibility on the other side of this that that uh, inflation could be could actually be quite low. Something absolutely mind blowing is going on right now in the housing market, and today I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in, and we're going to go over all things Redfin housing market update today. We're going to look at prices inventory, buying demand, unaffordability, all of those things, guys. And I'm also going to bring up certain housing markets just to show you what impact I believe inventory is having on housing markets, which is very little right now. Literally, there's, according to Black Knight, not Redfin, there's only three metro areas with enough inventory to meet pre-COVID levels. And each of them have year-over-year -year price decline. But what about the areas that have inventory growth? I'm going to show you guys the top areas of inventory growth, what that's doing to prices. I'm also going to show you areas with the least amount of inventory growth, which also has price decline, but yet prices went up. So what's going on right now, you guys, is absolutely crazy. It is breaking the laws of supply and demand. Sediment and emotion and expectations is stronger than fundamentals. Don't forget that. And if you guys can, please don't forget if you find value in my videos, if you want more information about the house market, please hit like, subscribe, shoot a comment below. But either way, I hope you guys enjoy. The name of this Redfin article is Housing Market Update. More homes hit the market as spring approaches. So we are going through some very, very pivotal time right now. So, and I'm not liking entirely what I see, but 7% mortgage rates keep buyers on the sidelines. It's also keeping sellers on the sidelines. Even though, take a look at this first paragraph, new listings posted their biggest increase in two months this week. But mortgage applications and pending sales declined as mortgage rates stay stubbornly high. So again, we have even less demand. So we have even more unaffordability, even like less demand. We have even more inventory and prices went up. That doesn't make sense. That's, that's not making any sense. Let's keep going. But many buyers are still sitting on the sidelines. Mortgage purchase applications dropped 10%. That's crazy because we're, again, right ahead of spring home buying season from a week earlier as the daily average mortgage rate surpassed 7% for the first time since mid-December. Thank goodness, you guys. We need high interest rates, especially right now, to really like beat down the sentiment out there. And I'm going to tell you guys, it's not the ill qualified that's buying. It's the well qualified people that are buying right now because things are even more out of reach than they were last year. If you already couldn't afford a house, what makes you think that people could now afford a house? You can't. It's still overpriced. It's crazy. A couple of the leading indicators, you guys, daily 30 year fixed rate mortgages sitting at 7.11%. That is up from a year ago at 6.78. So again, we are over a quarter, about 30 basis points higher than we were last year. But look at the weekly average is 6.77. Last year it was 6.12. So all areas of unaffordability are worse right now. Amazing. Take a look at this, guys. Mortgage purchase applications are down 13%. 13%. That's crazy because it was already dead last year. Now, week over week, it's down 10%. And that's not all that's down. Look at demand. Demand's down 15%. And again, last year it was dead. This is, I don't understand some of this information. This is so crazy to me. Like none of this is really adding up. It's probably because they keep messing with the data. And I believe they put, I think 20 or 40,000 new home listings in this data. Anyways, you guys, it is up about 5% from a week earlier. Now look at homes for search also down 15% year over year. Uh, touring activity doesn't give us year over year. It was just saying it was up from the start of 2023, that goes that gives us nothing. All right, now take a look at the winners and losers this week. All, by the way, the losers, again, all Texas. All Texas, and I'm pretty sure, like I've been saying, the reason that is hyper supply for new builds. They have so many new builds in some of those metro areas, like Fort Worth, you guys, they probably have as many new homes as they do existing for sale. They, they're probably like 50-50, probably even more to be honest. But the waning metros as far as price growth, we're talking about prices. Number one, San Diego, Southern California. And then also 
Newark, New Jersey at 14.3, Anaheim at 13.5, Philadelphia is number four at 12.6, and West Palm Beach at 12.4. I mean, this data is all over the place. And the losers, again, all Texas, but the number one metro is now San Antonio. It's no longer Austin. So San Antonio with the biggest, and this is not from peak, understand that. This is only year over year. So year over year, 4.1% down San Antonio. That's pretty, actually, that's pretty crazy. Austin's down 0.4%, but from peak, it is a bloodbath. Fort Worth down 0.3%. But let me show you guys this, okay? Look at the new listings here. So I pulled up all the new listings here, right? So like these are the top metros with new listings. Here's the bottom metros with new listings. Now, first of all, let me show you why I'm showing you this because I have seen a bounce up in some metro areas. Let me show you Austin. Austin had a massive increase. I'm sorry. Let me show you. This is Anaheim, not Austin. But Anaheim went up from December to January, breaking seasonality, and they hit a new record high. So Anaheim hit a new record high in January. That is a very abnormal. So when I go to Jacksonville, so again, I want to see if these metro areas are had declined from December to January because look at how much inventory growth. That is massive. Let's start with Jacksonville. So you guys can see actually Jacksonville did go down. So that did go down from December to January. It's still showing up 3.2, but because of the inventory, that's probably why you see things tanking in Jacksonville. Now, Dallas was also on there. You can see that Dallas, the same thing with Dallas. They did not have a run-up. It did go down from December to January, as is normal. Same thing right here with Fort Worth. A little bit of a decline there from December to January. But here's the interesting thing, guys. We had the least amount of inventory growth in Atlanta, but look at the massive drop in median sales price. So to me, I'm shocked because Atlanta has like... The least amount of inventory growth. And yet look at that. That's a new low. This is a new low for the cycle. They dropped down to 2021 20, levels. So in Atlanta, it's now at September 2021 levels as far as median sales price. Look at that decline. So that is the opposite of what we'd have thought. That, that's what I'm saying. This housing market, the data, the trends is so backwards nothing makes sense right now. It's probably because of the limited amount of inventory. Now take a look at Cleveland, the same thing with Cleveland. I expected Cleveland to go up, not down because it has no inventory growth, but yet it went down. So in other words, y'all, what I'm really, really trying to say is, is none of this data matters. It shouldn't really matter to you. What should matter to you, what matters to me is the subdivisions that I want to buy in, right? So if I want to buy in a city, I'm checking out the metro area. I'm looking at the schools, the demographics, the, you know, the labor market, those types of things. But I'm going in the subdivision. Every subdivision is different. It has different amenities, has different type of price points. So you got to dig into the actual subdivision, not necessarily what we just did. So remember that you want a market analysis, which generates comps or comparable sales. Comparable sales is a house that sold. And you review those and you determine what the value is. It's very, very easy to do. It's very simple math, but you just have to do it. And I'm telling you guys, something extremely crazy is going on right now in the housing market. I'm telling you that right now. But regardless, let's go into data visualization. All right, y'all. So as you can see, starting with median sales price, that is up 5.8%. Now, remember, year over year measures right here. Okay, so that's year over year. Now, I do want to point out, you guys, week over week, this was an increase. So week over week, we went up over $1,000. And I also want to point out is this is the time of year when generally home values start to go up into August. So that's why I'm saying we need high rates right now to stop this from happening. We need to stop the seasonality. And I'm going to tell you guys so far, okay, it doesn't seem like it has stopped. So thank God interest rates have been going up. Hopefully as more and more data comes out, as we go closer and even into spring, we will see prices start going down again. Everything again is completely backwards right now in the housing market. A lot of it is just emotion and people just buying emotionally because there's no fundamentals. Change my mind, comment below. Where's the fundamentals? Now I know there's a rare deal out there, but I'm saying overall. All right, so now we're at median asking price, which has been one of the most shady data points in I don't know how long, but look at how it's just plateaued. That's very interesting to me, but it is up obviously you guys 5.6%. Again, it did plateau week over week. This is normal. It's actually, it's abnormal that it's flatlining right now. Normally, again, it goes up into probably May in June and then starts going down again. So the fact that it's already started going sideways, that's a good sign. And when I show you guys price cuts, you will see an additional good sign. But again, prices still went up. So none of this is making sense to me. All right, so here's home buying mortgage payments. And this is what is absolutely killing America. I mean, it really is, you guys. So everyone knows how unaffordable housing was. 
right? Last year, especially, it's even more unaffordable right now by 7.9%. And again, you guys, that measures from here to here. That is year over year. But if we look back, you know, three years, look at how much the payment's gone up in three years or since 2021. I mean, it's gone up from about $1,500, you know, all the way up to $2,636. That's $1,100 more a month. That's crazy. That's not something that is going to be sustainable. We already know that's not sustainable. The only reason it has sustained as long as it has is injection of money, whether it be stimulus, PPP, EIDL, or the deficit spending, you say geopolitical, but there's still money being kicked into the system right now. And it's somehow getting into the housing market, into the hands of consumers. It's wild to me. Now, as far as demand, here's another indicator that demand is in the toilet. I mean, demand was horrible last year. It's even lower. Dem Listen, guys, it's even lower. Demand is even lower right now than it was last year. So that's why I'm saying I don't get this. It's down 7%. And we had a horrible year. We finished out last year at lows since the 1995. We had less transactions last year than we did during the great financial crisis. I repeat, we had less transactions last year than we did during the GFC. And it's worse this year. <laughs> Man, the quantitative tightening lags are just really out of control. The lags are just shocking. But anyways, guys, pending sales is down 7% year over year. Take a look at new listings of homes. This is also up 10%. This is good. So we have like more people bringing inventory to the market. That's probably a result of that golden handcuff effect starting to deteriorate because again, we are where we want to be, but we are above year over year. So we're above from here to here. So what's the other part of this, right? We need no, we need demand to go down. We need inventory to go up more than demand goes up, which didn't happen last year, which was very, very surprising to me. Now, here's a very, very important thing. Now, this is shrinking. This is total active listings. We're only down now 2% year over year. All right. We need to be more. We need to be higher, but we are only off by 2%. And I want to say that if we hit that 2%, we will have a four year high of inventory active inventory. So inventory is going up, but patience is going down. For some reason, you guys, it cut this off, but this was supply. Right now we're sitting at 3.9 months of supply. Again, we this is not good. We need it higher than this. Uh, we need to sustain four to five months. So if we four to five months sustain, we'll be okay. Now, obviously you guys, six months is a buyer's market. It has been six months of supply for new homes, a maintained six months of supply for two years. That's probably why you see the prices of new homes completely plummeting. They're jumped off a ledge. I mean, they're going down, you guys. They're down actually from peak, almost 17% from peak. That's crazy. And that's about a year, in a year and a half time. That's that's wild, guys. That's absolutely wild. Now take a look at this. And this is what doesn't make sense to me, you guys. Like this is bucking seasonality as well. So this right here is why I'm saying that sentiment is stronger than fundamentals because price cuts are breaking seasonality. Look, it's still going up. This time of year, Okay, you can see here last year, price cuts go down and kind of stabilize. Same thing here, they went down, stabilized. Same thing here, went down, stabilized. And then obviously it went up, obviously right here, that's when quantitative tightening started. And you see that right there, this quantitative tightening, even though rates were lower, this is what I mean, the sediment. People are like, oh my God, the government's tightening interest rates, everything's gonna crash, right? So we're cutting prices because people don't wanna buy, but that mindset changed in March of 2023. I remember that like crazy. Okay. But look at this, the price cuts, it's a four year high for this time of year. I mean, it's almost at a record high and that usually happens in August to November. You guys, price cuts are still surging. This is a great sign of everything that we have looked at so far. This is beautiful. This should mean that prices are also going to go down. Inventory is going to go up even more, but we haven't yet seen that. So we have to remain patient, but nevertheless, price cuts are absolutely surging. Demand is down. Unaffordability is worse. Interest rates are higher. Inventory is shooting up. Sales are in the gutter, but yet prices are still resilient. Again, something just absolutely crazy is going on. And that's why it's so especially important. If you guys want to go out and trust realtors, even if you are a realtor, you want to trust yourself, that's fine. Trust people. I'm not saying necessarily not to, but verify, verify, say, can you show me the comps? Oh, this is a good deal, realtor. Can you show me the last three years of comps 
in the subdivision. You have to be careful. Some realtors will just take comps within a two, three mile radius. It has to be in the subdivision. They could take comps from the good subdivision where your property's in the bad subdivision, okay? So this, you gotta put everything in perspective, you guys. I'm telling you right now, every market is different. Every subdivision is different. I see areas in my own local housing market. I'm repping a buyer right now. I see areas that are out of control with buyers in high price points. And then I see other areas that are dead. And then I see new home communities that are sold and selling out. And then others that are dead as well. So again, <laughs> There's cracks everywhere. There's writing on the wall everywhere. It's up to you to read that writing on the wall. And it's up to you to decide whether or not that warning, that writing on the wall is grounds for you to hold fast, to sit on the sideline, to save your money, and to work on your purchasing power as you wait to find your dream home. That's what I'm doing anyways. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be taking you guys through. And my next step as far as my home buying journey is I gotta do my taxes for this year. After I've done my taxes, I'll reevaluate my purchasing power. And I already found two houses that I like right now in February because there are good deals out there. It's just, there are barely any. It's, it's ridiculously hard to find unless you have access to the MLS, multiple listing service. But anyways, guys, I really appreciate you. Don't forget about the free home buying course. Don't forget to hit like. And other than that, if you're out there investing in real estate, you already know I wish you luck and I hope you win.